Well, let's turn to the corporate loan market. And Metrics Credit Partners is Australia's largest non-bank corporate lender. So it's competing with the big four banks, if you put it down to that. So to take us through the space and why there is a growing role for such lenders in Australia, Andrew Lockhart, Managing Partner at Metrics Credit Partners, joins us now live. Andrew, welcome back to AusBiz. Wonderful to have you here. Um, so I'm curious to know what demand has been like for your services through this pandemic. Yeah, look, it, it's strong. So if you think about it, we provide an a very important sort of alternative source of debt financing to Australian companies. But equally on the investor side, a lot of investors are looking for stability of assets and predictable income. And so, you know, the ability to raise capital from investors and to be able to find appropriate opportunities to lend to good companies provides a, a, a good solution for both. Yeah. So is there any tension between the risk that you're having to take on with some of these corporate loans now and uh, you know the rewards that you can yeah, bring to investors. It's interesting. A lot of uh, fund managers, I guess, always talk about you know capital preservation and the ability to preserve capital. Our asset class is actually a clear demonstration of how you preserve investor capital. So when we lend to a company, you know, we negotiate the right terms, the conditions, we set the pricing, we take security, all designed to protect and preserve investor capital. And so, you know, the risk assessment that we do is obviously central to understanding whether or not the company presents a good opportunity to lend to that company. But then you need to ensure that you've got the right terms and conditions to mitigate risk of loss. And so that's a real feature of our market and our lending activities. And have there been any issues through this pandemic with some of your debt covenants? No, I, I think you always have a situation where companies will have to respond to changing market conditions. And as a sensible lender, you would ordinarily work with companies to ensure that they're not ad adversely impacted as a result of a covenant that might trigger if there's an alternative way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. A covenant is designed as an early warning signal. Mm -hmm. And so effectively what that means is that, you know, it's a means for a company and management and the lenders to sit down together and to determine that, you know, to ensure that the risk is still with equity. You know, so as a lender, you know, equity, the asset class of equity is the asset class that should wear that risk of loss, not a lender. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an extraordinary, I'm sorry Nadine, no. it's an extraordinarily a crowded space now in Australia. The alt banks, the alternative lenders, we see them of every different shape and size. Um, I'm just curious to know your take on the way that the Australian system has developed so quickly over the last five to, to mm. ten years? Look, I, th I think it's still very immature. Yeah. The Australian capital market or debt capital market is very immature. It's a very heavily bank f um, focused group. Uh, so, you know, companies, most Australian companies don't have credit ratings and so their ability to access alternative sources of debt financing is actually quite restricted. So they tend to be reliant on banks. And so it's natural that as a result of a lot of the regulatory pressure and the cost of funding pressure implied uh, imposed on the banks means that um, there are opportunities and I guess if you're an investor you sit there and say okay I can invest in a traditional bond fund that bond fund manager will buy the bonds of a bank mm -hmm. well wouldn't you be better actually um, buying the credit of the companies that the banks lend to and generate the full return rather than seeing part of that return paid away to the bank and so our, our position is that you know we originate good quality lending transactions where we charge borrowers fees and interest margins and the like and that becomes the income that's paid to our investors so i think as a team you know we've got a really strong skill set around origination risk management and because our funds have grown to a size and scale that they are you know we're actually a very relevant player in the market whereas a number of other new managers don't have that depth of, uh, of, of capability at this point in time and if i'm looking at this from the um, pure investment opportunity um, you have a couple of retail uh, sorry listed vehicles mm. So how have they been performing through the pandemic? What types of returns can investors expect? Yeah. So we have one fund, which is the MCP Master Income Trust, which is MXT. That fund was designed to be the more defensive, stable part of uh, an investor's portfolio. So in that fund, we seek to provide investors with a minimum return of the RBA cash rate plus 3.25% net with income paid monthly. That fund has exceeded that uh, minimum target return since its listing in October of 2017. And importantly too, the, the unit price is mm -hmm. not at a material discount to the quoted NAV. 
we have a, a, another fund, which is the MCP Income Opportunities Trust, which is MOT. Uh, that fund was designed to provide investors with a minimum cash coupon of 7% per annum, uh, with potential participation in upside capital gains. Mm -hmm. uh, that fund launched in April of 2019, and again, we've exceeded that minimum target return for investors. So you're feeling period. pretty good right yeah, now. Yeah, I think we, we're focused on delivering for our investors. And so where are the opportunities now, either to grow, uh, you know, grow the fund, expand, extend your lending, you know, where, what areas, what sectors, because I remember, you know, you, you invest in sort of everything from <laughs> transport to education providers, I might get one of these wrong too, you know, restaurant, uh, yeah. restaurateurs or, you know, organizations. Mm. So mm. where do you see the demand coming from? Look, Australia is a very large debt market, but it's a bank focused market. And so investors haven't seen a lot of the opportunities because a lot of the companies that we lend to, the, the assets are held on bank balance sheets. And so really what we're doing is opening that up for investors where they can get get direct diversified exposure. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in MXT, for instance, investors are invested across a portfolio of around about 145 individual corporate borrowers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a very well diversified portfolio and lowers investors' risk. So I think from our perspective, where we see opportunities is often where the banks pull back and so in, say, property-related lending transactions, the bank's risk appetite has been pulled mm -hmm. back. And as a result of that, we think there's some very good opportunities for us in that part of the market. Okay. Mate, exciting times. Andrew Lockhart, Metrics Capital Partners, thank you so much for thank coming in much. today. Have a great weekend. Thanks, thank Andrew. You.